going to pull the microphone. Thank you. A pleasant good afternoon, colleagues. My name is Una Midube. I am the team leader at the AUDA NEPAD, responsible for skills and employability. It is my singular honor and pleasure to moderate this session, and especially, Madam Vice President, thank you for joining us this afternoon. We're very grateful for your presence. Um, we've been given 45 minutes. Please start the clock. I'm just not sure if you are using GMT or Zulu time or Australian time, but we'll get there anyway. Thank you. So today I'm supported uh, by two rapporteurs uh, who will come at the end. Please listen in carefully because this promises to be a very exciting engagement. Um, but the honor really is to have as the panelists uh, distinguished guests or uh, distinguished panelists from Ghana and uh, the Honorable Minister will join us shortly but we also have with us today the Director of Cabinet from the Democratic Republic of Congo uh, Mr. Koto Eyalong Femen he will come in and speak to us later on uh, Ms. Uh, Professor Mona Larossi, welcome she is the director for the Institute of uh, Francophone for Education and Training, and uh, we'll hear a little bit more from her later. Uh, Mr. Esa Kavin, welcome. Thank you so much. He's the director and principal of Riviera, the former director of Finnish National Agency for Education, and he will speak to us about the experiences uh, from uh, Finland. Then we will have uh, Ms. Martha Mupesi, Executive Director, Forum for African Women Educationalists, this is FAWE, uh, and they will be focusing on gender in TVET, TVSD, sharing some good practices. But to get us started, we are here on the island of Mauritius, and what I saw, Mr. Yamal Matabdu, thank you. It's promising to be a very exciting presentation. Please, would you take the floor and uh, trigger some thought for us? Remember what the minister said today. We need to think. Help us to think. Thank you. Prime Minister, ministers here present, excellencies, sisters and brothers of Africa, international delegates, my colleagues from Mauritius, very good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. It's a, a marathon that's happening to be a sprint, so we're going to do the best that we can. <clears throat> the reality today is that many places around the world, we still see that TVET is operating from a low base. In certain countries, that's fully justified because of the need of the hour, because of the need of the economy. In other places, this, is, this can be quite restricted. On the other hand, three or four years of front-loaded education in university, oftentimes reveals obsolete skill sets by the time students come up. We have a paradox. There are three forces that actually help and that are accentuating this. Number one, intrinsic forces. Any member states, any, any governments around here are actually looking at the next developmental journey. What is it we need to do in terms of skill set building to craft the future economy? Number two, there are outside in forces. The future of work, Industry 4.2, there are automation, there is a number of different forces that's forcing us to become more competitive, more resilient as we go forward. Exogenous shocks like the COVID pandemic, we mentioned again over the so many different days of this conference, are actually coming in and changing a lot of the data. So three forces that are pushing us to think of TVSD of the future. We've been talking about think tanks, we've been talking about the need to think. What's the future TVSD? We're going to try and go through some of this in terms of five Ps as a framework. But before I do so, this is the campus of Pomplemousse. It's 15 minutes away from here. I know there are quite a few interested parties to go visit. We look at what higher technical education is doing in Mauritius. Five Ps. Policy, program, projects, people, process. Irrespective of where we stand in that paradox, we realize that the holistic framework 
is really important where policies are talking to one another. Or a, in this case, a pan Mauritian skill strategy or a pan African skill strategy. As we look at that, we, we've been hearing over the past two days that in certain countries, Quebec is split across many departments, across many ministries, formal, non formal, informal, etc. So we realize that there is a need for clear lines, clear delineating lines through complementary institutions, whose purpose is what and intended what for. So as we look into this, we realize that to get the base right, we need to overcome the thin and weak conception that TVSD still has in many places around the world. Everybody knows this here. Obviously, this is not preaching, all are experts, it's sharing. What do we do about this? In Mauritius, there are three axes that uh, we've adopted. And I'm going to be very careful because the uh, Vice Prime Minister is here, along with uh, the whole uh, management of the ministry. So, reform, reprogramming, rebranding. From a reform point of view, obviously, legislation has played an important role. We've had, two years ago, we had the Skills Development Authority that came forward, where we realized that skills, being the new common currency, don't necessarily fit in very linear in terms of as qualifications and credentials do in the National Qualifications Framework. Sometimes it's in between. How do we actually grapple around this? There is the, the Honorable Minister mentioned earlier today, the Institute of Technical Education and Technology, because high quality technical education is really required for the future economy. There are, uh, there are a number of different policies that are coming up. We've talked about the O-levels, the new O-levels in terms of the technological track. Because entrepreneurship and really thinking ahead of time is really important to realize the type of skill sets that we want afterwards. So we need to start early. Even from that point of view, career exploration, career counseling has to come at a much earlier rate in terms of paving the way for employers to get in and also offer the whole panoply of programs, of courses, that could be interesting to students. Failure to do this lends only in certain choices. I either become an accountant, I become a doctor, I become a lawyer. But if we are to be aware of all the different areas, nursing, specialized nursing, cybersecurity, interactive digital media, architecture, engineering, maritime, ports authority, aviation, so many different aspects that can be developed through technical education. At the background of this, one of the really bold and decisive steps that Mauritius has taken is to change the two-point system into a four-point system. The vocational university have given way over time to vocational, technical, higher technical university. So from that point of view, we realize that there are a number of different policies that have come to help us. Diploma to degree. For instance, here, when students have a diploma acquired through TVET, through technical education at level six of the National Qualifications Framework, they should have no barriers to exceed to level seven, a bachelor topper. So this establishes a clear connect in a manifested form of TVSD to higher education. <laughs> Similarly, we've talked about the free tertiary education scheme in Mauritius. Every student has the opportunity to articulate through the first undergraduate cycle, and that's also apl applicable to TVET, for free of charge with the 10 public institutions. Again, this is strong signal and commitment that this is what we need for the economy. The IC technological we already mentioned. Alongside of this, in terms of the four different rungs that have been created, we also see that we need to stay away from normative structures in TVET that have always perpetrated. An apprenticeship has to be four days in industry, one day in school. But if we look at cybersecurity, a diploma in cybersecurity, and we look at a diploma in graphic design, maybe <coughs> the cybersecurity may need more knowledge to practice. So we need to have an agile mindset to realize that we need to have a slider scale of knowledge to practice, especially for the future economy. So that's again a reconceptualization of what TVET, of TBSD for the future is. Reprogramming re, uh, has this ability to look at what's the best way to service different economic activities based on which rungs of the ladder of education. 
for instance, an engineer that comes out, usually trained at the university, in a long period may find an immediate job as a senior technician. Employers are happy because I'm getting higher order skill sets at a lower pay. But soon to realize that this person was not actually trained to become a senior technician. Just because I have hired does not mean I am fit for purpose for what I need to do. So this ability, again, channeling around the reprogramming is an important feature of the reform agenda that has been taking place in Mauritius. A new policy has also been around, there's been a lot of, uh, a lot, a lot of changes in Mauritius, again, preparing for the future economy. For example, so many, I've just taken a few. Students who complete the O-levels, have to secure five credits to go on to the A-levels academic, the A-level system. But again, the students who do not have the chance either to reset or to go through technical education, higher technical education, and eventually map out to university. So there are no blockages. This was mentioned by the minister this morning. But this is proof that this, and this is actually happening. We're having many students join higher technical education that are opting preferentially for this rather than going. There are students even with the five credits or six credits that are actually now turning towards technical education. Rebranding is an important aspect as well. But there's an important lesson here, I think, from Mauritius that can be shared. Rebranding does not mean product line extension. Let's do it differently. What we've realized has worked here because the Polytechnics, for instance, as an example, has an increase enrollment by 3,000% over the last four years. And that's because there is a genuine way to look at it at a new concept. This is not just extending what used to happen. New credentials, new specializations, modern infrastructure, high-tech equipment, higher internet con connectivity and speeds, make it that this is not the one that we used to think of in the minds of students, but certainly in the minds of parents. Today we're looking at a new form of education, not just slightly revised. And I think that has made a big, big impact. And this is something that we could share and talk a little bit more about. So this whole soft power and modernization is really important. We talked about the skills mismatch for the past two days. But the true complexity of this issue is that it's not just the skills mismatch. It can be a job mismatch. It can be an orientation mismatch. It can be an intergenerational mismatch. Some students have different aspirations. We're looking at Gen Y. They have different aspirations of what it is they want to do. Now, if they can follow a certificate in Internet of Things or a diploma in Big Data, yet that's taking place at the technical education institution, they realize that this is completely different. So, and the best form of preparation for those fields lies in those institutions because of their applied model of learning. Their, the archetype of TVEC itself has for too long been too rigid. Functionality takes precedence over aesthetic and design. How do we want it to be attractive when we're focusing only on the functionality? A plumber or a technician were mentioned earlier today. The plumber and technician of tomorrow is different from that of yesterday. The amount of soft skills is really important. Just having a functional plumber does not do it anymore because I need negotiation skills, I need business development skills, I need the art of communication. So to sell my craft, I need to even get there. I need to be visible. So how much are we working on that attractiveness factor? That's an important consideration. We are looking at targeted interventions as well. We've all gone through the targeted through the COVID pandemic in Mauritius. The Human Resource Development Council has been coming up with a number of different schemes. Back to work moms, youth unemployment, whether it is structural unemployment, whether it is national training and reskilling programs, with short bullet courses to reskill and upskill. Too often we confound skilling, reskilling, and upskilling in one package. The, the language is entirely different, the way to prepare is entirely different. The portability of skill sets is an important consideration. During the pandemic, one area where we experimented here in Mauritius was the mesh of different skill sets, interdisciplinarity. Healthcare, hospitality, in preparing for luxury 
vacations, luxury tourists to come here for longer periods of time. Mauritius was a safe place. Tourists came, there was a different visa structure de uh, developed for this. So again, how do we bring the healthcare and the hospitality together for luxury types of settings? That's an area for interdisciplinarity by mixing and matching that. The, the need for TVEC being born from bottom-up innovation has always been that we need to solve problems, real problems. That's why TVEC has to be culturally close to society. We cannot have a top-down approach. It's not going to work. So again, by having a lot of the students coming on board, participating in the internships, that mesh of private sector-led engagement being working together with the students for a new form of work integrated learning, for a new form of student contract, a new form of contractual arrangement between, between uh, employers and training institutions. All this is required today. We have at the level of uh, polytechnics, students who go for part-time internships, full-time students go for part-time internships. They end up getting full-time jobs and we need to turn them into part-time study, even before finishing. If you're not agile, how can we do that? So again, the needs of the economy are such that they dictate what are the forms that we need to, to use. The director of the MQA is here. The RPL and harmonization. We talked about education hub this morning. This imperative for TVET, also TVET, along with higher education, to be courses where students from Africa can come in. The whole talk about yesterday of comparative advantage. Does everyone need to do everything? or we realize who has the most expertise to be able to do this. And then exchanges take place. <laughs> so it's the, the whole system is changing. We realize that even trainers in Tibet need to change. Here, we've been experimenting on externships. We take the trainers, we put them back in work. Two things happen. One, technical ability goes up. But the second thing, which is them getting back into industry after many years, reveals what are the true pressures, what are the competing deadlines. And that ethos, that softer power, comes back to school in terms of mentoring, in terms of guidance, etc. So all in all, we see that local, solution, local problems need also local solutions. I think we've heard that quite loud and clear this morning as well. From that point of view, I, I am reminded of the Meiji, you know, the Meiji restoration in Japan in 1868 when they used to talk about Western technique, but Japanese spirit. Maybe this is a time for us to think about world techniques from world over, but African spirit, Mauritian spirit. Until it is not culturally close, how can we think that we're going to get a sustainable solution? How do we think the pathways are actually going to work? On paper it does, and here we've experimented with this, and to a large degree, we've seen students coming out of vocational, with a certificate coming into diplomas, then coming on to universities. So the pathway is actually working. And this is, I think, a lot of lessons learned that we can share. The attractiveness factor is a key, key, key element. We've talked about this. You know, we've got uh, some examples of some of the simulation spaces that we're using at the level of polytechnics. This is the IT lab, the architecture lab, uh, specialist kitchens, nursing design spaces, peer-to-peer -peer learning being one of the new forms to actually learn even within this. I've left this here. This explains a little bit more the pathways. You will get a copy of this. We won't have time to go through it. But again, it shows, I think, a lot of the sophistication that's taking place and the multiple entry, exit, re-entry pathways that are actually taking place in Mauritius. We are constantly available to discuss about this. And I think that uh, as much as we can share, as much as we can collaborate as an African narrative, the better it's going to be. We dream of that day, and we hope it's going to happen very, very soon. We're finished with our African students on campus. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that inspiration. I felt like maybe I should send my son. Check, colleagues, I understand the French translation. Is it now working?